Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one is a request from Cesar. Don't know if I got that right. Light and darkness theme. The weapons will be dual swords, which will be purity based, and then a choice between Tomfus Fist or Claws. I went with Corrupted Claws. Guardian Spirit. One will be with purity support for facing yokai, the other is corruption support for wrecking humans. Cores. One soul core for applying corruption for the corruption guardian spirit. The rest is up to you. But I am thinking of at least one core for key damage, while the rest is elemental cores to help apply confusion. And then forgot about the enemy for the demonstration. Any scroll that has a human boss and yokai boss is fine. Maybe Saito, Toshimitsu, and Ryoma Sakuna. So I definitely do tackle those. Um, you'll see when I get to the gameplay showcase. But let's talk about what I'm working with first so you know what I'm dealing with. And here's my Demon Horde Dual Katana. Purity, Anima Bonus Grapple. It doesn't have all my premium stats on it. It's just Purity. Get the Anima Bonus on Grapple. It has starred melee key damage, which is nice, but ultimately isn't that necessary. Uh, then I've got my Suchigumo Clawed Fist, which is one of my favorites, simply because Life Drain Active Skill, melee key damage is great. I could, again, put an Anima Bonus on here, but my whole spiel with all this stuff is to reduce the requirements to be able to get into the stuff anyway. So let's get on to the soul cores and guardian spirits respectively. So I went a little thematic with this and you may have noticed the character that I worked with is Suzuka Gozen, you know the character's yokai mommy I guess. So Soya is her guardian spirit. So I thought what's about as anti-yokai as it gets when it comes to guardian spirits and his purity and Soya definitely fits the bill. Nullify Confusion, which is fantastic. You just never have to worry about that whatsoever. So that's really handy. Um, key Recovery Bonus is kind of nice, but really it was just the counter yokai tactics because it's very anti-yokai and it's Sohaya, which is purity. So that works really well. The Soul Cores are Lady Osakabe. So I didn't go like the traditional route for key damage. Most people are like, hey, just use Ippon. I'm like, yeah, Ippon, where have I seen that before? And the thing with Osakabe is that it is a fantastic just mass AoE stagger core. Like if you're dealing with too many yokai, just throw it out and it works really well. It does a good amount of key damage and it's 7 anima and it's very powerful for what it does. So yeah, it definitely gives you a nice break when you're dealing with a lot of yokai. Next we have Kasha. This is very anti-yokai as well. Just, uh, I mean, it's an anti anything, if I'm to be completely honest, because Kasha just wrecks this everything. It has a tendency to veer off, as you may know, but Kasha is definitely your big damage dealer. And when you have purity support, as we do, and you pair it with Kasha, it just destroys everything. Getting that confusion off is nice. Now, when it comes to soul cores, I strongly advise you get this one up to 30. Life Drain Yokai ability hit is absolutely awesome, and it just makes things so much easier. Uh, I have, in my opinion, really premium stats, but these aren't required. If you want more key damage, like I have max yokai ability key damage, definitely go for it, but it isn't really that necessary, especially since purity on its own just increases the key damage that an enemy takes by 50%, which is crazy. Last but not least, to facilitate even more key damage related factors, I went with Kiryoki as my default quick cancel core on this setup. So this is very much just like you've got access to fire, you've got access to super stagger, and Kiryoki when it hits a target, not when they block it, but when it hits a yokai, which is pretty much all the time, you will do a considerable amount of key damage. I'm very fortunate to have max yokai ability key damage on all three of these, so it's quite noticeable, but it's not really necessary. So let's get on to the second guardian spirit, which is Baku. So anti-human, corruption, soul core, I'm like, well, and I need a brute, so why don't I just go with Baku, which has a ton of attunement, which I don't actually take advantage of. So the theme was very anti-human cores, and I was thinking of the encounter with Saito Toshimitsu specifically for this. Ancient Neotengu is definitely going to be your friend, and when I get around to the soul core guide for Ancient Neotengu, it's definitely going to be used against Saito Toshimitsu. So yeah, this is absolutely awesome. So yeah, this is about as anti-human as it gets. They block spam, Ancient Neotengu punches them. You don't need to boost the stats unless you're particularly attached to the anima bonus, but I didn't. And so you don't really need to either. Now for applying corruption, there are a few, there's basically only two real options, actually three. One of the options is Mitsume Yazura, and I wanted a quick core that costs pretty low. And yeah, four is as good as it gets, just four anima and spray and pray. There were things like Oboroguruma, but I've used that a bunch already. So I figured I would go with Mitsume Yazura. You have a lot of options given that we still have four extra attunement. So this only uses seven. So you can go up to, if you want to use Shuten Doji, which has 11, you can. Uh, but yeah, you can fit in just about any other soul core in here. But I went for Corruption, low cost, and 
Mitsume Yazura is really, really good. Um, you don't need to boost this up. Uh, I would say, though, that the Anima Charge Critical is generally underappreciated. Um, it's in its own category, and I've noticed that things like Anima Charge and Scathe and Critical actually perform much uh, better than I would realized. So it's pretty handy. Um, Yokai ability key pulse is ultimately the only thing I cared about, though. Last but not least, we have Yasha. So Yasha is actually a very good core against humans, and it is surprisingly effective against Saito Toshimitsu. So yeah, definitely worth using, and is probably the only core in this setup that I would advise, at least on this Guardian Spirit, getting up to 30, simply because we're going to reduce the amount of skill key that we, the active skill key that we consume, and for fists, that is great. So yeah, definitely worthwhile using, and Anima Bonus Water Attack, it's great. Uh, just as you can see here, we've covered four of the elements. We have Corruption with Mitsume Yazura, Yasha gives me water, and then Sohya, I mean, by virtue, just has purity-based stuff, and then Kasha has fire damage. So you're pretty much only missing lightning, but I generally don't use lightning anyway, so it's really not too bad. You've got a lot of things uh, covered, and so let's just show what this is all like. Uh, I guess I'll start out with the Yokai Shift, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right, let's get you out. All right, so Sohya, yeah, let's get to work. So I usually like to back off, pop this. Look at that, purity stagger, go in. Man, this is quite loud. Attack alongside Kasha, when the target's dead. Um, Kiriyoki is like your quick core, cancel. You can always just charge in and stuff. And then if you want to get double elemental application, you can use Kasha. See, it's pretty devastating. Dang, that is so loud. Holy cow. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely pretty crazy. Let me show it one more time. So you could start off with this. It's pretty devastating. Also, Cobb, yeah, it's 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 a very powerful setup. Um, you, just attack a lot alongside Kasha, get things confused, and things will die. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anyone immune to this, really, except maybe, like, Nightmare Bringer, but we're not going to be fighting him. I mean, look at that. I didn't... It's, it's crazy. So, yeah, a lot of AoE damage, a lot of AoE potential. But what about Brute? Brute's a little different. A little bit different. So we've got Baku, you can pair, you can do that. You can chain paralysis if you want. Water wave and a fire wave. It can be pretty devastating. You have ultimately a lot of area denial here. And that's really what you should play to when it comes to these uh, the, the Yokai Shift forms. Just keep them chain locked. Yeah, it's pretty devastating. So uh, I'll do it one more time against Yoki, and then I'll showcase some weapon-based combos alongside these soul cores. Dude, this is just so dirty. There you have it. So yeah, I like doing this. Do the fire wave alongside the water wave. Let me show it once more against the human. But yeah, this is pretty dirty. All right, what do we got? Oh, it, it missed. I'm too used to Yokai, I guess. Usually bosses don't get knocked uh, that far down. But yeah, it's pretty powerful. You got a bunch of regular attacks. So yeah, it definitely will be a lot of fun. But let's just showcase some combos uh, with this setup. Uh, when it comes to Osakabe and Kasha, they're kind of going to be their own thing. Uh, whereas you can kind of work with the other four. Kasha, you pretty much are just going to attack alongside. I don't think that one requires too much knowledge. Like, it's just going to do so much work on its own. And then with Osakabe, you can't really combo on its own. Um, you just, you know, you, you're, you're waiting for the whole animation, but you can use it to help you set up some longer winded attacks. Kiryoki, on the other hand, probably will be your staple combo ender. 
so that's my two cents on that. And even if we switch over to the other weapons, it's kind of the same thing. Here's a cool one. Osakabe can be fun. I've used Osakabe to help, like, screw over human opponents as well. Dang it, come on. I know what I want to do. Let's go. I mean, you got stuff like this. You can knock them over, usually. So yeah, I mean, Kasha, I don't really need to demonstrate. I think, though, with the Brute stuff, you're going to get more out of it. And comboing with Brute feels pretty spicy. Can always swap weapons. And it's dead. I can just, yep, he's just dead. Uh, let's see what else I can generate. Start that out. Let's go into Spinning Dragon. Pretty nice, huh? Alright, what do we got? Pretty neat. The nice thing with Neo Tengu is that it just works. It doesn't matter what element they have on the target. It's still pretty devastating. Oops. Oh, that's always fun too. Let me see if I can show something kind of funny. I'm going to try to do like a little juggle for you. Gonna try. It's not like the craziest thing, but it's kind of fun. Come on. Come on. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it didn't work as well as I'd hoped. Yeah, let's try it again. There we go, that's what I wanted. <laughs> Juggle with Osakabe, isn't that fun? Alright, what do we got? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Kinda neat. Alright, let's try a few more things and then I think I'll call it here. If it was alive, I'd throw out Neo Tengu right after that. So let me show it. Let me show Battering Ram into Neo Tengu. Okay. Come on. Fine. All right, earliest possible opportunity. Kind of nice how I kept it locked, right? All right, I got Raijin set up. Oh, come on. All right. I think that's good enough. But hopefully that should give you some ideas on what to work with. And yeah, let's get on to the gameplay showcase. I'll see you guys momentarily. All right, time to put this to the test. Uh, we're going to be the yokai mommy disciplining her naughty children. Uh, I did not realize until just this moment that has some sexual undertones. So that was uh, not intentional. In any case, how do we deal with these yokai? So it's pretty straightforward. These are all fairly weak enemies. And uh, the first part of the fight uh, in against all comers isn't particularly difficult minus the kappa, which is why you saw me use my jutsu like immediately. Uh, this double wheel monk thing is quite frustrating. So you can see I swapped to claws, but man, I almost died. And that's rough. But one thing you may have noticed is that I got a good chunk of my life back courtesy of the life drain on Yokai ability hit. It makes such a huge difference, and it's one of those stats I think kind of gets ignored. But yeah, my objective is simply to take one of these out. Osakabe doing a good amount of work really helped. Oh, but... Oh, okay. I'm safe. 
it helps. But man, this is quite tricky because you got double the wheel monks to manage. So I'm using the purity setup, of course, because purity is as anti-yokai as it can get. Use Kiryoki. I'm setting up Raijin to give me a little bit of assistance. And wheel monks on their own really aren't too bad if you can just get behind them, but I'm having a little difficulty with that with dual swords because I'm not the most comfortable with them anyway. But yeah, this is not... Oh, excuse me. No, man, I had a little burp there. Sorry about that. And we have a little burp right here with Saito Toshimitsu. He's the difficult enemy of this entire situation. But thank you, Neo Tengu, for completely eradicating his key. I really appreciate that. And so, yeah, you can really lean hard on ancient Neo Tengu for anti human effects. There's Yasha once again. It didn't work the best because, surprise, surprise, Saito Toshimitsu has hyper armor. Unfortunately, fists can be very effective against him and keeping him locked down. The general strategy for Saito, in my opinion, um, is just non-stop attack him, don't let him do a single thing, which I don't really find to be that fun because I kind of, I kind of want him to do his kick-ass moves that he has, but <laughs> dude, <laughs> we're not taking a chance with that. And Ancient Neo Tengu really helps with that. So I'm actually cycling in between the different uh, weapons just because I'm trying to combo him non-stop. You notice that he blocks and he dodges, he blocks and then he dodges, then he... What is he doing now? He's blocking. Okay, one attack. All right, Azuna drop, nice. But what is he going to do afterwards? Is he going to... Yeah, he's going to do his super crazy fast attacks. And then he's going to block and dodge. Because that's what he does. I go for Beyond Infinity. I, I totally whiff this. And then I realized, you know what? Maybe this was just... Maybe this was just in the cards all along. He doesn't deserve the pleasure of getting destroyed by Beyond Infinity. So he's not getting it. Now, when it comes to this fight overall, I find that Phase 1's more frustrating than Phase 2 because... In phase two, he has crazy attacks like this, but there is a noticeable amount of counterplay that you as a player can have. And so I actually prefer that even if it is arguably crazier. Um, in phase one, it's just, it's just block dodge, block dodge. And yep, anyway, Yokai shift because I just want to take advantage of its superpower. Here's some cool combos that you can work with using this whole setup. And you notice I'm keeping him pressured. Kasha's is doing a good amount of work. I'm attacking a lot in Yokai shift keeping him pressured quite honestly all the time, using Osakabe to keep things staggered, really taking advantage of the power of this. And I don't really think I've showcased Yokai Shift's raw power too often against very human opponents. Human, human opponents! Dude, this guy sucks to talk about. Anyway, he's mostly dead, thank goodness. And let's get some anima, very, very nice. So what's the next play? Yasha, send him reeling back, except he blocked it, because he's so fun. You're so fun, Saito, I really appreciate that, dude. But all right, let's finish him off. I think I'd give him some a, a very spammy, disrespectful way. I'm like, I'm tired of this guy. He deserves to die. So let's just give you spam. You deserve spam because all you do is spam. And now he's dead. So it worked out reasonably. But let's get on to Ryo Mitsukuna. You'd think that his yokai form would be more devastating. Uh, unfortunately, and that is not the case. So there you go, some cool opportunist play. And I find this fight to be significantly more interactive, simply because you can basically do almost everything you'd like to. Now I'm able to tap into additional soul cores, get good use out of them, which feels pretty good. And then let's see if I pull off Beyond Infinity this time. Nope. I guess I'm still uh, upset over the first fight, but oh well. So with Ryoma and Sukuna, just, you, if you play evasively, more or less things will be in your favor. Oddly enough, using the Brute counter works really well because if you just stay on top of him, you can quite honestly just, when you see red, you just throw out Brute. It works really well. Whereas the other ones, you kind of have to time. Um, the one attack that can throw us off, oh god, I almost got myself killed. Um, <laughs> the one attack that can throw players off is when he just like jumps and it's really difficult to work with or when he grabs it can be very troublesome but other than that i find this fight to be fairly straightforward and you can see how i'm more or less kind of managing this and even though i'm cycling in between purity and corruption i'm not having what appears to be nearly as much trouble as i did with saito toshimitsu which is great and then here's a decent use to of all these soul cores, even if they are not necessarily inflicting their elements, the amount of raw uh, max key damage they inflict can still be really helpful. And when I pair that with a uh, nice brute counter, sweet, let's go Neo Tango into Yokai Shift. But when I pair all these things together, it is actually quite powerful. And it is certainly pretty effective. Let's see if I can paralyze them. Like, can I paralyze them? No, I can't. Oh, wait, I did. Just like that. 
All right, good job, Yasha. Do I switch over? No, I give him a chicken bone. Why don't I switch over, man? Holy cow, that's a lot of damage. All right, Neo Tengu once again. Baku, charge, be really inefficient. And then I think I just like, yeah, yeah, I just let him die. I wasn't sure. So, I, you know, screw these guys. They deserve to get wrecked. So hopefully that was informative and somewhat uh, entertaining. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope, again, this was fun. And I will, of course, see everybody next time.